Well, hello. This is the, actually the second time I've done this for tutorial. I actually did it in Home Designer 8 yesterday, but I had some technical difficulties and the audio audio didn't record. So I'm going to redo it in Pro 10 in Windows 7. I did it in Pro 8 and Windows XP, and for some some reason or another, the audio setup didn't work. <clears throat> so anyway, believe me. The differences between Pro 8 and Pro 10 in terms of what you wanted to do are close to zero. So doesn't matter. I'm going to turn off the grid. I never use grid snaps or the graphic grid. Just a, a choice of mine. I'm going to draw here a, a rectangle. And change that to a... Um, Kind of an army barracks. <clears throat> yeah, I like that. So, G Gable shoe box. I don't care what the pitch is because we're just demonstrating. And you were talking about uh, trust and trust details. So I'm going to, what the way I would do this in 10, uh, I don't need to explain to you why I would do it differently in Chief Architect Premier because she up Chief Architect Premier is different. So how would you do it in Pro? I'm going to open a layout, new layout. Okay, there's a layout. I don't care what size it is. Again, this is not a tutorial about layouts. It's a tutorial about the question that you ask about trusses. <coughs> so the next thing I need for, for truss detail would be a truss. And basically, uh, let's just take a quick look here in Elevation. <clears throat> what the truss tool does is it fills up the, the void created by the flat ceiling and the, and the bottom of the roof. That's all it does. I'm going to leave this camera open and go back to plan. That's control tab to switch between open windows. Let's see, I got layout, the camera view, <laughs> and the plan view. I just hit control tab. I use it all the time. I think it's quite convenient. Now, for the truss, we'll go over to trust, uh, excuse me, framing tools, and where's the stinking truss tool? In, Ver in Pro 8, it's over here. Let me look under build, framing. There it is. Okay. They moved it a little bit from version 8 to version 10. The same tool works the same way. And I'm going to draw a truss. <coughs> yeah, I want to display the layer. And, uh, ooh, why can't I see it? Well, the layer isn't turned on, probably. So we'll go over here to framing, hit F on the keyboard, framing, rip crushes. See, it's turned off. <coughs> and there's the, uh, <coughs> there's a truss. <coughs> and I'm going to do two versions of this, because commonly you'll have two, two types of trusses on a minimum. <clears throat> I'm going to take this one that we're looking at <clears throat> and uh, copy paste it in place and then drag the copy over here to the end. Oh, it snapped right into place. I want it right on the edge of the framing, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to open its dialog box and force it to rebuild because it's not going to rebuild unless I tell it to rebuild. And I want it to be uh, an in truss. That's all. But that's basically the two kinds of trusses you have. You have an in truss and then I'm not an intrust. I'm going to close this camera view here because I don't want to see both of those trusses. See, I can see kind of the intrust in the end. <clears throat> so I'm going to use the uh, backclip cross-section camera for one. That's the backclip. Backclip is just going to show me from where I left click to where I release the mouse. See that little bra those little bra virtual brackets there? That's all of the model I'm going to see. Makes a nice clean picture of the truss. <clears throat> then I'm going to do another one over here for the end truss. And again, it's occluded by, the truss is kind of enveloped in the in the attic wall, so I'm just going to turn the attic walls off in this uh, camera view. <clears throat> There's a different layer display options. They ought to name these so you actually know that they're not the same dialog, but uh, when you're in plan view, you get one kind of... Uh, 
display options, and they're not. The, it's, it looks like the same dialog, but it isn't. This is the one for plan view, and this is the. If I open one in here, it's it's for the one for the this kind of camera view. As a matter of fact, I think I'll make that as a su suggestion. Oh, that always bugged me that. Uh, New use, it's confusing to new users because you have to be clairvoyant or something to know that they're actually not the same one because they look exactly the same and they have the exact same name. Anyway, okay, now I want to turn off walls. Let me hit the W key and we'll turn off walls attic. Now there's no walls attic showing in this view, but there, it was in this view. See, now the attic walls are turned off. Now I can clearly see the truss. You can actually, we probably would, to just get the truss, we don't need to see the roof planes. Let's turn roof planes off as well. Hit the R key. Roof planes, planes. Okay. We'll turn off roof planes. We need your roof planes there to form the truss, but not to see the truss. I'm going to turn off all this roof related stuff. Okay. Roof style. Okay, yeah. We don't have anything on. By the way, when there's a red plus sign or something on the layer, when there's no red plus sign, there's nothing on the layer, but nevertheless. Okay, see, so now we can just cleanly see the truss. <clears throat> and I finish this up. I'm going to use end to end. I think I can draw a, a dimension along these uh, cords. Yeah, hit the control key. There we go. I, I hit the control key so it's not snapping off angle. This may take me a few tries. Yeah, well, that's not working very good. Let me turn angle snaps off. See if I can get a, a dimension to draw from there to... I'm not quite sure exactly what you need. I have, this is actually easier to do easier to do in Pro 8 than it is in 10. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> All right, we'll use this tool. This actually creates its own... Uh, dimension points. I was hoping I could just use, okay, that's pretty close. Yeah, this is going to work better. I don't know if you need to know this dimension. I'm just going to play like that's the dimension you want. And you can zoom in and get these points a little uh, closer. I'll just use that point. You can see I'm not being very exact, but if you wanted exact, you just zoom in and put those. I mean, I'll just demonstrate rather than say, figure it out. You click on the point, and then I'm going to control drag the uh, point right to that point. You can get this very, quite exact. <clears throat> I never do this because I leave uh, trust trust design to uh, trust engineers, and they've never asked me for this kind of stuff. Uh, but it may be different from where where you are. I should be able to get a lateral dimension with just this tool. I'm going to try to snap it right to that crux there. It doesn't want to seem to go. All right. Now, it's not measuring the truss cord. <coughs> it's measured to the wall. Let's see if I can get this over here. I want it right there. I might have to... Uh, uh, where's CAD? Okay, we'll just draw an arrow right there. I want it right there. I think the dimension tool will snap to a, a, a dimension arrow. I'm sorry, a CAD a text. Yeah, oh, come on, get over there. <coughs> well, it doesn't seem to want to go. All right, that didn't work. Where's the uh, CAD lines? We'll draw a line. I just wanted to draw right there. Oh, I'm, I see what I did wrong. I have angle snap still turned off. <coughs> anyway, I should be able to move this dimension over to uh, that CAD line. There we go. Dimensions love CAD lines, so if you're having a little trouble dimensioning exa exactly where you want to go, I see this is off. When you're doing ex and you want uh, exactness, then zooming in is what you want to do. That's better. And it's measuring down to the, that point. <clears throat> well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do the same thing because I would just do the same thing on the other end. You get an accurate dimension here. 
and now with that layout open, I'm going to take this and send it. File, send a layout. Okay, yeah, I forgot. Uh, I'm not going to save it in templates. I'm going to save it on my desktop so I can throw it away. Fine, Untitled Plan's a good name. <laughs> now I want to send this to layout using the current screen. And uh, I'm going to send it uh, half inch scale. And then click OK. Yeah, OK. So there's one trust detail. <clears throat> and then uh, we'll name this file here. Uh, I guess that is safe. I intended to give it a different name. That's all right. I'm going to close this layout, <clears throat> open a new layout. You could do this on one, at one page, I suppose, in a different scale. We'll go open a new layout. And this time we'll send this uh, send it, and send it at quarter inch scale, current screen. Yeah. Okay. And we're just going to, I'm just going to show the truss. So there's the in truss. I'm going to close this. And if you were doing this, you'd want to, you'd want to up, not update it, but save, save it. Whenever you send something directly to layout, it gets automatically saved. So I'm not going to send it again. And we'll open this one and play like I've dimensioned it and send it to layout, quarter inch scale, OK. And there's a, the two of them on the same layout at quarter inch scale. <clears throat> Like I say, I didn't bother to find out what size paper this is. Uh, it's probably 11 by 17. Yeah, it's 11 by 17. Yeah, okay. So that's how I would do this in the <coughs> in Pro 8, Pro 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 2012. It's pretty much the same thing for trusses. If I wanted to communicate trusses and dimension them and so forth, you certainly can. And... Uh, Exporting to uh, DWG or excuse me DXF and so forth. I think is an unnecessary step. You can do it this way quite quickly and easily, and it's accurate. And uh, if you're careful and uh, so forth, it's it's also uh, accurate. Okay. Thank you. End of the tutorial. I hope it helps you. And I hope this stinking video tutorial has sound in it this time. Thank you. Bye.